Well, happy birthday, Western Open. Happy 100th birthday. We're at Cog Hill Golf and Country Club in Lamont, Illinois, just south of Chicago, and the first regular PGA Tour event to crack the century mark. As such, this tournament is positively steeped in tradition. It's tradition that begins with the names of the legends who've won here through the years. Names like Hagen, Sarazen, Nelson, Hogan, Sneed, Palmer, Nicholas, Watson, and most recently a young man named Woods. David Toms went out this morning, shot seven under 65. Meanwhile, this afternoon, Phil Mickelson, who started out on number 10. This his first hole of the day for birdie. Okay. Yep. Starts out nicely, one under par for lefty. He bogeyed 14, birdied 15, and a chance at 16 to move to two under. And he does just that, so Phil Mickelson in the chase. Two under through seven. Tiger Woods, two-time winner of this event. He also started on the backside here on number 10. Second shot. To within 10 feet. John Cook, he's been a little frustrated lately with the putter. Looks like his golf swing is very comfortable and relaxed but he has been battling the putter a little bit. Just, he says, not making any putts. Maybe not stroking it you know, quite like he wants to, but just, if you're not seeing the ball go in, it gets frustrating, puts a little pressure on the rest of your game. An example of it right there. Woods settling for par at 10. We move to 11. The par five, his second shot. After the longest drive of the day, 355 yards to the, to the pin. Tiger with a middle iron type of shot in there. To go and it does just that. So Woods would be staring at that putt for Eagle. And this time he makes it happen. So Tiger Woods, two under through two holes. Five shots back. The next hole, the 12th. John, this for par. Right next hole after making a nice putt for Eagle, lips it out. It's not like he's hitting bad putts, he's hitting the hole a lot. But you got to start seeing those putts go in. Keeps rounds going. So Tiger fell to one under. Meanwhile, head to the 13th. His second shot. This a thing of beauty. Beautiful look at golf swing. Very controlled off a side hill lie. One of the di most difficult holes on the course. Controls it nicely. Settles to about eight feet away. Let's stare at that putt for birdie. To move to two under once again. These greens have a lot of slope. They get very quick in the afternoon. As you can see, Tiger puts it way out to the right. Perfect speed. Tiger Woods back to 200. Par 14. Then at the par 5, 15th. He was on in two. He missed the eagle butt, but had this for birdie. There you have it, Tiger Woods. A birdie to move to three under par within four shots of our leader, David Tom. And there's our first round leaderboard. Tom's the winner last week in Memphis, shot 32 on the back. Jason Gore, Cliff Kresge right there, two shots back. J.L. Lewis, a very important event for him and others. We'll get to that momentarily because he's, he stands a very good chance of making the British open field. Now let's go live to 17, Steve Melding. Bill, thank you very much. Mickelson after the birdie at 16. His second now at 17. Laid up way back. The report is he popped up his tee shot here, but a good solid second. Well past the flag, but a difficult hole location front left today. Moments ago, back on the tee, it's a dog leg to the player's right, filled with a fairway medal. This is a great shape hole for him who likes to play the ball from left to right, which in his case is a hook. And you don't normally take a divot like that with your fairway medal, but the good news is he missed it straight. Did make the fairway. Not all swings are perfect, folks. Take heart, those of you back home. Even yep. game's best struggle. Mr. Alice, back to you at 16. Thank you, Steve. 
Tiger's second shot in a spot of bother, Billy. Yeah, it's played a poor tee shot off this uh, short par four dog leg left. Has an awkward lie. Ball's going to sit well above his feet. Hole location just on the right side. Has a pretty good lie, though. It's going to be tough to keep his balance. Only has 141 yards. <laughs> Unlucky. It nice. was difficult for me. <laughs> well, it touched the flag and it just didn't grab it and stay in, but that could so easily have gone in the hole. Unfortunately, he was uh, dodging away from that cloud of dust. I doubt whether he would have been able to see it anyway, but he knows it's close. I don't know whether he knows how close it is. Nearly a two. Meanwhile, there's a, there's a great look. If you're behind those trees on the left, you're going for it in two, you better be close enough and have a, uh, a long iron, have some loft on that long iron to make that uh, Your that first happen. priority is getting your second shot over top of those trees. And if you miss it to the right, it's not a bad spot. But if you miss it left here, it's going to rattle around in those trees and you, it could go anywhere from there. You, you bring a lot of numbers into play if you miss it left here. LeVay, by the way, is not one of those worried about qualifying for the British Open. He's already in the field. Runner up there last year, took it uh, in a, in a four-way playoff, actually took Ernie through the, the four-hole playoff and into sudden death. Had a little peek at it, but spun it back a little bit too much, not a bad play. Back to the ninth. Jerry Kelly, the defending champion, but a little bit weak on that one. Started off quite well and has just been sort of treading water, going slightly, well, holding ground, you might say. Mike Weir from just off the back. His fourth shot. David Toms out early, continuing continue his uh, brilliant play. A 65 from David. Set the pace early on. Peter, don't you think players putt the ball more from off the green now than they used to as we see Mike choosing a putter here and instead of uh, seven or eight iron for a little bump and run? I think it goes in, it goes in phases, I think, uh, Phil. They used to use the old word Texas wedge, came in about 40 or 50 years ago. Then it went out of fashion when somebody thought of a new uh, chipping club, a new fluking iron, something that would do the job better. Now they seem to be reverting to using three and four woods from off the edge of the green to chip with. So I don't know. The game's gone crooked, I think. To 17. Chris Smith set to play second. Billy Ray is there. Just in the first cut of rough on the left-hand side. That's uh, a very good position to be in. The whole location yeah, just six paces over this you. bunker. Should be quartering at you. Only has 128 yards, though. Breeze has really picked up. A little right to left, back in the player's face. His jump pitch in this second shot plays up the hill. Well, you short sided yourself there. And not only did he short side himself, the ball did plug. Mm. Tigers left with the situation here. He only has 107 yards left to the hole. Has to take an abbreviated backswing. There's a little bit of tree treble. He looks like he's going to take a lofted club and try to get the ball up high. It's going to have to go right of the pin, but he does have a choice of running the ball up if he'd like to up the right hand side. That's the problem when you don't put it in the short grass. You're at the mercy of the rough with the ball jumped out of its pitch mark. Shouldn't be too tough a shot. Well, once again, David Toms continues his good play. The winner last week in Memphis, all he does today, go out and shoot a little seven on the par round of 65. And happy Independence Day, everybody. We are celebrating here at Cog Hill Golf and Country Club in Lamont, Illinois, just southwest of Chicago. And besides the resurgent play of Tiger Woods, the story here 
unfortunately, has been the weather. We've been dodging raindrops and lightning and enduring delays for the better part of a couple of days now. We had an hour and 42 minute delay yesterday and then an hour this morning, but we're pretty much back on track now. The play, of course, is underway and it will take some doing to for this field to feel the effects because after the rain yesterday, well, some of the guys shot lights out. Tiger Woods, our leader, at 11 under par, a 63 yesterday, back with a 70 today. John Cook letting his game to the talking. Not quite as sharp uh, today as he was yesterday, but uh, he, he battled it through the last couple holes, made a couple nice saves coming in, and uh, finished the round with a couple shot lead so far. David Toms, two shots back. Phil Mickelson with a 69 today. He is at five under par, six strokes back. Stars everywhere you look in this field for the 100 Western Open. And instead looks like got the big one. Well, and that's kind of been the case for him this year, hadn't it, Steve? He's down to 50% fairways hit, 182nd, I believe, on tour. He's been overly aggressive, possibly, off the tee. And this is headed well to the right. Oh, he cut the corner, Phil. How's that look? Uh, it's long, but unfortunately, it's going to be in some deep grass and big trees. Did it kick out? Kicked that out in the kicked fairway. Out okay. and that's about 40 yards short of the green. I mean, it's no uh, surprise that you lost it there because, <laughs> Canada, the route he took, I don't think anybody in the field can take that route. Back at the eighth. All right, Steve. Mariyama, second shot. Back up the hill, must clear that right bunker. Well played, little left of the flag. Has a nice little backstop just so beyond the pin. Ridge. Mm -hmm. To 16. Tiger, third shot. Has a perfect line right, up, right back up the hill. Scared it. Looks like a safe par four for Tiger, who's had a bit of an up and down round, but he leads at the moment at 11 under par. The eighth hole, Masters champ Mike Weir next to play. Had a round going yesterday, John, for a while. For a while, stumbled a little bit coming in, but uh, might have lost the, I think it's uh, dinner not tasting too well, but wake up this morning, ready to go. This is where his game has really improved in the last year is his wedge game and short iron game. He has dialed these clubs in to the point where he's very confident in hitting all kinds of different wedge shots, all kinds of different little iron shots. And obviously his putting is, has really improved. I played with him last year. It looked like he had just two catcher's mitts on the putter. And this year it looks like the putter really fits in his hands well. We're playing alongside Maruyama and the defending champ, Jerry Kelly. Needless to say, this is a popular threesome. Very tight looking swing, very efficient looking up and down. John, why is it that all left handers have good swings? <laughs> they, they, they really do. If you, you put them in the mirror, it, they just look great. Every one, good positions. Uh, right on down from uh, you know, Craig, Greg Chalmers, who you don't see a whole lot, but a very good looking golf swing. Mike Weir, obviously Phil. Let's go over to 12. That's easy for a par. He's been going very well, but I'll drop one here. One under today, 64 yesterday, back to eight. A lot of good looking left handed golf swings like uh, like Steve mentioned. They all learn the right way. Let's see what Kelly can do here. His second. Took the aggressive nice. route right at the flag. Excellent shot from, from the defending champion. He's not shy, is he? Not shy. He might have, he might have even taken a driver off the tee there to put it down there where he got sand wedge. Now to the 18th, and this is Robert Damron. This is for Birdie to move to eight under. Hit a good shot to keep it right out of this hole today. Big swinger. Oh, broke right across the hole. Heartbreaker. Those are the ones that get your heart going. You look uh, up and they're going right in the middle of the hole and all of a sudden they just snap right off. 
What did I do to offend the man upstairs? Good to see Robert playing well again. He had a struggle at the beginning of the year, didn't really make any cuts. Actually withdrew from a couple tournaments, but he's played well the last month or so. Now he's in the house at seven under par, four strokes back of the leader, Tiger Woods. And we can tell you that Tiger just made par at 16 to remain at 11 under, two under for the day. Charles Howell, second shot. This is from 164 yards, having to get the ball quickly up over the lip of the fairway bunker. Caught like that he, heavy. Looks like he slipped a little bit. It'd be unusual for Charlie out of the bunker. He's got uh, very little lower body movement. It's uh, you have to keep your foundation. So I wouldn't think Charlie would slip very often in, in a fairway bunker. And Sauer second. That from 142 yards, going the nine iron. Gino needs a birdie or two. He's at one over, and the cut is in all likelihood going to be in red numbers. So that's a must make for Gene. Well, Phil, uh, <laughs> you, you need to hop a taxi to catch this uh, tee shot here. How far has he got to the green? 66 yards to the hole, <laughs> 42 to the front, Steve. When I saw that ball take off to the right, I didn't think there was any way he could reach the fairway. This hole at 420. Granted, he cut the corner off a little bit, but this tee shot's in the neighborhood of 350 yards. You almost get the sense he lives for tee shots like this. Now, can he convert? Okay. So Mickelson four under, but he's made 11 birdies thus far through two rounds, and he has bogeyed four, four of the last six holes he's played here. Two eight. All right, and Mike Weir staring at a lengthy birdie opportunity. Back up the hill, not a whole lot of break here. Just got to get the speed. And he's got the speed, and then so. It looked like he got the speed. How about that? Mike Weir, three birdies in his last four, moving to six under. To get this close in one putt for par. He's at three under for the day. Right over top of the flag stick, just a little bit long, trying to draw it back off the hill. It's not going to make it, but a chance to 17 again. Tiger Woods back on the tee. Played driver off this tee yesterday and drove it through the fairway. The ideal shot is from left to right. Not much of a breeze at all today. Teen it low again, BR, to try to hit the same type shot, although that went up in the air pretty good. Started down the right side of the fairway. That's going to end up fine. Just in the first cut of rough on the left-hand side. To the eighth. And Mariyama for birdie. Similar distance as Mike Weir, but this is on a little different angle. This has Whoa. a lot of break to the right. <laughs> Catch the hole, yeah. please. The air breaks on. So Mariyama. Under par for the day, four under for the tournament. Back to 17. Charles Howells, third from left of the green. Plenty of green to work with, just needs to loft it up over the bunker, land it gently on the green, which he has done. That'll be okay. Uh, you forget how important short game is. So many people work on the long game. Two eight. And Jerry Kelly, closest of the three. This is for birdie as well. It's an easy hole, isn't it, John? Well, it is definitely an easy hole <laughs> for this group. But the, the tough, toughest putt is to make that third birdie after your first two playing partners have knocked it in. Jerry Kelly, the defending champ. The 100th Western Open third round action and what a start for Tiger Woods. Started the day with a one shot lead. It's at the second hole. From 179.
Woods, who opened with 63 on day one, 72 under par yesterday. Backs that up to within four feet. Curtis Strange, as he's been struggling a little bit, it's been putting, but the putting's been on thus far this week. Well, that's what he said. As we all know, if you make some putts, it makes the rest of the game easier, and it looks easy right now. Birdie at the second, birdie at the third, two under through four, on to the first of the par fives, 525 yarder, second shot. Lofted club out of the rough, didn't look too bad a lie. From 215 yards. That'll do. Better every second to uh, just inside of three feet. And this chance to go four under through five and make an early statement here on this beautiful Saturday in the Chicagoland area. That gets Woods to 15 under par. And off to the sixth. Par three, playing 221 today, not to about 20 feet. This one of the hardest holes on the golf course. Big old long downhill par three. And whenever you make birdie here, you pick up a shot on the field. And extending his lead. Five under through six. On to the seventh from 102 feet. Knocked it to about 10 feet, 102 yards. Knocked it to about 10 feet. Rolled that in for birdie. So Woods opened six under his first seven. Just a second ago, dropped a shot at the eighth. But his lead is five over the Masters champ, Mike Weir, the 100th Western Open, up next on ABC. By the tens of thousands, they filled Grant Park on the 3rd of July in downtown Chicago to celebrate Independence Day 2003. Typical great show down there. Taste of Chicago going on as well. What an awesome weekend to be in the great American Midwest. And few better cities than Chicago. You can find anything your heart desires here, including some of the best public golf in America. Cog Hill right at the forefront. These golf courses here southwest, about 25 miles southwest of downtown, about 30 miles away from Wrigley Field. The Dubs Dread Course, Cog Hill Golf and Country Club hosting the 100th Western Open. In the States, only the U.S. Open, an older event, in terms of the PGA Tour, only the British Open and U.S. Open have been played more often than this one. We talked about the history going back to 1899 and Palmer and Sneed and Hogan, Casper four times, Jack Watson among the winners here, and Tiger Woods looking for a third win in this event, has a five-shot lead. He opened the day with a not as big a lead. It was just one, but on their titleist leaderboard, he's five clear of Mike Weir and Cliff Kresge is in the last group, trying to hang around in new territory. Rich Beam. Also with a good round going at six under par. Look at the strong field this year at the Western as everyone gets set for the British Open in a couple of weeks. Defending champion Jerry Kelly, Robert Allenby always plays well here. Phil Mickelson looking to find his game a little bit. On back to Luke Donald, former Northwestern star. A big group at seven under par. Jim Furyk, the reigning U.S. Open champ. One just uh, another half hour drive from here at Olympia Field. Kresge here on the tee. Beautiful golf hole. Tree line the entire way. If you don't put it in the fairway, you have a tough time getting into this hole in three regulation. And there you see golf course made much softer, able to score today. Had some rain early this morning. And there you see by the scores, five, four, two, six, six, two, four, five under par. The only one not playing well is David Toms, which is a bit surprising. Tiger. Seen plenty of fireworks from him today, let alone the, those we watched last night. Peter coming off a sloppy bogey back at eight, put his second shot in the back bunker, pitched out to about eight feet and lifted out. Good drive. Now ahead on the green, 562 yards away, Scott for Plank, this for Birdie. Yes, sir. Well done. Ten under. That's just a one under today. Six behind Tiger. Up to 11. Next par five, 564 yards. This is the third shot of Phil Mickelson. Mickelson two under on his round. And he went on to make that putt coming back for birdie. So Phil Mickelson eight under, tied for 10th, trying to find his way and find his game before heading over to the one major he says is the toughest for him. The British Open in two weeks. Back to 10. 
And this is Jim Furyk, US Open champ, deciding to play from the path rather than drop it in that gnarly rough. Ian, if he took a drop there, he would be in some long grass, unable to spin the ball. And you know, made much easier. That looks tough. The main thing you have to do is keep your stance. Don't let your feet slip on the on the concrete. But as you see, <laughs> what have I done now? Not a tough shot, though. Certainly not as hard as uh, it may look at home. Mike Weir now. Just 97 yards left after a perfect drive. Made the turn today at four under par. Go oh, just a little bit. Oh. You know, Ian, this is the hole he. Ah, he messed up a, a couple break. years ago when he was going head to head with Tiger Woods. Made bogey here on Sunday afternoon and was never a factor after that. That's right, I remember that. That was a bad break there, Billy Ray. Hit the flag and bounced off the edge of the green. We're back at the 10th, Mike Weir. Unlucky little second shot there. Hit the flag, finished here. Pretty simple pitch here. One of those chips, Billy Ray, that you, you feel disappointed when you don't chip it in. We'll head back to nine. Tiger pitching over the bunker, not easy. Well, he's drawn a pretty good line, Peter. Uh, he's got to get it up. And stop it with the trajectory and not the spin. And get his club on it. Just got to get his club under it quickly. Like that. Really. It's a simple game, really. You know, it's only us who make it difficult. Back to ten. This is Jim Furyk putting down the hill for birdie after that approach off the road. And he'll tap that one in for his par. He'll have a little visit to the uh, trailers at the end of the round today and get the Sandpaper onto that club as we head over to 12. Mickelson, 207 yards today, downhill. Well, that must have looked very good from the tee. You can see eight or nine paces short of the hole. Good shot. At the 12th, here's Mickelson coming up the slope, across the slope. It's never boring watching Mr. Mickelson, whether he's having wayward shots off the tee or beautiful huge drives down the middle of the fairway, or missing little putts or holding outrageous ones. But there's something going on. Now, Tiger is uh, a putt for a not, a not too long putt for a birdie. Five ahead. Peter, I know we talk about it every year, but this really is. There's good golf courses and there's pretty golf courses. This is both. This is a beautiful golf course to, to play, to walk, to be a part of. You don't have a housing project on every hole. Beautiful trees. Peter, has been good this week because his pace on these little putts has been so good. been too bad either. He just had a little hiccups. A few little putts have slipped by over the last two or three weeks. He seems to be back in the groove again now. Pace and line and rhythm and balance all clicking together. And uh, oh, once again, six under for nine holes. That's not too bad. And his handicap is to come off that as well. Makes the game look ridiculously easy when in full flow. Woods off to the back. Nice little 30 to start Saturday afternoon. That's the way to take a small margin and increase it by a lot. Tiger leading by six, looking for his third championship here at the 100th Western Open on ABC. it going early on a birdie at the first and a birdie at the second to get to 20 under par woods at that point eight clear of the field dropped the shot at the fourth but let's pick him up at the par five fifth 
Second shot. Dominated the par fives. Again, reachable with an iron. Gets there, a couple of putts for birdie. Get back to 20 under par. Woods going for his fourth victory of his 2003 season. Four birdie at the par, four seven. Well, once again, Tiger, a terrific front nine. Remember, he shot 30 yesterday to kind of dust off the field. And just seconds ago at the eighth, from the fringe for a fifth birdie on the front nine. Well, the followers needed him to slow, get off to a slow start, but he has not done that. <laughs> Steve Williams, check that one down. How about 22 under par? Tiger shooting for records and another victory this Sunday on ABC Sports. In the United States, only the U.S. Open has been around longer than the Western Open. And in this uh, great American city where public golf is as good as it gets, uh, public golf course has been a great host to the best pros in the world. The 100th Western Open, Cog Hill Golf and Country Club, Lamont, Illinois. It's about 30 miles southwest of uh, Wrigleyville, 27 miles south and west of downtown Chicago. A uh, couple of consecutive nights with big, booming, wake you out of your bed thunderstorms uh, rolled through here, so the conditions have been ideal for going hard at it. And Tiger Woods has done just that. He is 22 under par through 62 holes of this event. Uh, if he plays the <laughs> remaining holes in one over, he will equal Scott Hoke's 72 hole record for this event. He's on 90 and he's uh, dominated the par fives right throughout this week. This 562 par five, very narrow. A little tiny dog leg to the left and he's looking right again. Mike, he's 22 under par and hasn't driven it as, as well as we have seen him in the past. And that's in the right uh, bunker, Curtis. It's a force layup now. All right, Steve Melnick, who's out there with Tiger in the Lions group, as we look at our Titleist leaderboard, a 10-shot lead. Tiger, who has uh, set records in the past, has a chance to do, it, do so here and have one of his most dominant victories of his, uh, what would be 38 in his PGA Tour career. You see, it's not chopped liver. This is one of the better fields you'll get outside of a major championship. Byron Mickelson, Singh, Tom, Scott Verplank, who won here as an amateur in 85. Good to see Chris Smith having a good week. It's been a struggle for him during the 2003 season. Let's check in with Peter now at the par 312. Playing uh, 204 yards today, the US Open champion, Jim Furyk. Four under today, 11 under for the tournament, and hello -y. Yeah, <laughs> what a bonus that was. Coming down the hill, speedy putt. Very nice indeed. Meanwhile, at the ninth, recorded Rich Beam in, pro in trouble. Has to get this ball up really quick. <laughs> Well, he did, and a good result from a tricky spot. To ten. Left-handed Canadian Mike Weir on the tee here of the short par four. Going with a three-wood. Has a history of playing well here at Cog Hill. Went head-to-head -head against Tiger two years ago. Good course for good ball strikers, this course. It is. I mean, it, this is no walk in the park. Let me tell you, this is a good golf course. Big, big greens. I think that lends itself to low scores as well as the rain we have received the last two nights in. The greens have been much softer on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Scores have been much lower. And playing its length, 7,320 yards, par 72. Two lefties together today, Phil Mickelson now. Well, that's really a change. You talk about the changes in golf, the changes in the, so many good, solid left-handed players. That's right, six or seven very good left-handers playing the tour. That one looks like it's going a little left. Only 50% of the fairway so far this week for Phil. And that's another miss there. 50% for the year as well, which isn't very good. Trying to get himself in some good form, coming up for the Open in a couple of weeks. And we'll head back to nine. Tiger at the ninth. Well, he's making swings like he's going to hit a big slice. He's got a tree in front of him. He's got to go way left. He's got to slice up at 30 yards. I think this is heading for the Guinness Book of Records, this one. 
Well, he got lucky. He hit the forward slope, and uh, it's in play. <laughs> Six. Mm -hmm. I like that. We drove it left off the tee and, and laid up here. One great layup. So it's got six iron from 168. Back into a pretty stiff breeze. Allen be one over today. Mickelson for birdie. Hit a good little approach shot there out of the thick rough. Had an interesting uh, hour or so in the gym this morning at the hotel with Phil talking about the Open and Mike Tirico and I had a chance to visit the course there earlier in the week and I was just filling fill in on what to expect there at St George's. He was very interested to hear that the rough wasn't going to be as thick as it has been in the past. Was pretty happy about that. Remains even par and nine under total. Rich Beam, second shot. This from 120 yards, sand wedge. Tough hole location, just five paces over the bunker. Yeah, good aggressive play there for Rich Beam. Still the amazing thing to me is how far the ball goes these days with the sand wedges, 120 yards. Back at nine. Allenby now, long putt here, his fourth shot. Well, the hole leapt into the way of that one. Good job it did. <laughs> Disappeared. So you see, he was in trouble most of the way. And he's the first one in for a birdie four. So you never know. Now, before that, this was Tiger. Fourth shot. Couldn't. <laughs> well, he frightened it. I wonder what it would be like to play with a 10 shot lead. Quite nice, I think. <laughs> uh, here he, he is. He certainly doesn't shoot it to the middle of the greens. Well, don't tell me you might miss it. That's what you could miss it. Not Tiger. Oh, Only a mundane par. Keeps that uh, 10 stroke advantage. Allows himself a little wry smile. And on to the next. Back in the 18th, live coverage of the finish of the Western Open. Robert Dameron put his second shot in the water from the middle of the fairway. He has this putt from bogey. Must make this to qualify for the British Open in two weeks. He does not. That means he makes double bogey. And because of that, Chris Smith will get into the British Open. There's uh, two separate lists based on your finish here this week or your finish in five tournaments. And it's uh, very hard for us to figure out, never mind the players. So I doubt Robert knows that exact situation at this point. He's just upset because he wants to have a good finish. He wants to have a good finish because he has been struggling this year. Yep. So, in all likelihood, that gets Dameron out and Chris Smith in to the British Open via the qualifier here. 17. And he must make this one and birdie the last if he's going to have any chance of putting a little bit of pressure on Tiger. Not to be. Par for Beam remains 17 under and back on the tee. Tiger with driver. Just straight down the right hand side. Well, he hit three wood yesterday straight to the right. I think he's decided to hit driver today and just go over the edge of the trees. Let her go. Yeah, drive a sandwich. Get off! Beauty, Come on there. Thank you. Well, everyone liked it. And well should. <laughs> Perfect, Billy Ray. Absolutely. It's Craig Thompson giving the number quickly to Robert. He, he's ready to go. Should be just a nice, solid pitching wedge. A little breeze back in the player's face. 
Robert's one yeah. of those players that wants to yeah. know it all. He wants every little bit of information he can, but he still wants to go at it quickly. Sometimes he just gets a little bit out of sync. 18. And with what happened to Robert Dameron a moment ago, this is the third for Tom Byram, who, if he makes five, bogey, is in the British Open. So two putts from there, 7-7. Seven, seven. And Byram will earn a trip to Royal St. George's in Sandwich in two weeks. This whole very complicated procedure to get into the British Open via what happens here in the States will change to just a regular qualifier next year. 17. Tiger's second shot, Billy Ray. Slightly downhill lie. 117 all the way to the flag. Coming in very low. This looks good. Spin back. Very nice. Nice controlled rhythmical swing. And the Masters champion, Mike Weir. You know, you talk about Mike Weir and how he's so grounded and how this winning the Masters and being so successful won't change him. Remember, he was already very, very successful out here. Winner of some WGC World Golf Event Tournament and, and other tournaments and hugely successful from Canada. Um, he'll just go about his business. He wants to play solid golf. And you have to remember that's your priority. Won at Riviera, won the Nissan Open, won the Tour Championship in a four-way playoff at Champions a couple of years ago. Won at Valderrama, the American Express Championship, and won the Air Canada Championship. Jerry Kelly, while we were away, for birdie at the last. Downhill, big swinger from right to left. Just gonna jump him up to third place. <laughs> 68 68 finish. So uh, Kelly, not only in good form, but uh, with good confidence, heading north to his home game, the Greater Milwaukee Open, next week. He'll do well next week. Rich Beam for second place. He'll be in second. I see. It's four from here. He'll finish at 16 under par. But 65, 67 this course, this field, this weekend. Could help turn around Rich's season. Second is his best since the PGA Championship in Minnesota last month or last year. And Glenn Day finishing. Glenn had a poor afternoon. First time back in contention in a while for Glenn. And he shot 76. One group left. Cliff. Kresge in the bunker. Has to get this ball up really quick. Perfect line in the bunker. Looks like he caught it nicely. That's going to come up well short, Curtis. Uh, he had to get that ball up so quick, he took about an eight iron and couldn't get to the green. Well, so he was actually laying up. Okay. Right. Solo seventh for Kresge. If he can get up and down from there and make par. Meantime, Allenby is trying to stay in this four-way tie for third, 14 under par. Should be a nice solid six iron from 178 yards. Since we came back from the rain delay, he's played some poor iron shots. This one coming up the right side. Another poor one. Well, he's fortunate it got in the sand. You know, you come out, you get out of sorts as we watch Tiger just lay up, I think, the second shot over these trees. Curtis, he had a terrible lie. You know, you come out and you get out of sorts and you're playing only three or four holes. You've been stopping and starting all day long. It's tough. It's tough on the back. It's tough on the body. You never loosen up like you were the first time. For all these players, even the ones that play well, it's, it's, you're still out of sorts. So this will be another wire-to-wire -wire victory for Woods, who opened with a uh, course record tying 63 in the first round on Thursday and will be his seventh wire-to-wire -wire win three last year. Will also be his fourth win in, what, ten starts this year? 
Hello. Slump this. Says the world's number one. Strengthening that position. As he moves to a third Western Open Championship. I think he's getting to a part of his career, Mike, that he's learning how to live. He's learning how to rest. He's learning how to motivate himself. And he's still, as we talked about earlier, only 27 years old. But he's finding out how to do these things, much like Jack Nicklaus did. You have to get away when you get Hold away. The cameras, folks, please. Thank you. And when you play, you have to come ready to play. Always been able to really, really focus when he does play. But the key there is that you do your work, you do your due diligence, you do your practice, and you, when you show up to a golf tournament, you come prepared. Third shot. Now those uh, loyal fans here in Chicago who hung around through the two delays. We'll wait for Cliff Kresge, Kresge first and then give Woods a welcome here at the last. Tough little awkward shot here. You have to carry it 50 yards or so, but you don't have a lot of green in which to work. It has to be struck perfectly and landed just on the putting surface. He'll take a lot. Putting his memory rank these last two days playing with Tiger Woods should help him out quite a bit. Uh, great shot. I, that's where he's been the most impressive to me. When yeah. He's been in trouble around the green. He has uh, saved himself some shots. That putt for par and solo seventh. The difference in uh, making or missing that putt is about $25,000 for Kresge. Allenby has to play this bunker shot, his third. Should be pretty quick. Good line in the bunker, though. Flopping. You know, when you get out of sorts coming down the stretch, you don't hit any shots the way you want to. You know, Curtis, you mentioned these players are playing just a bit faster. He's not the type of player that likes to play fast. Good point, BR. Well, you think about all the negative things when you start to get over a shot, and that's the way you cannot play good golf. You have to get over there in that situation and think you know the way it's going to come out, you know the way it's going to hit the green, you know the way it's going to spin once it hits the green. And we talk, I'm sorry, go ahead, Billy. Well, right. and, and you start hitting poor shots, and you think about, well, you think about the water, you think about this or that, everything but what you should think about. Then you start second guess, uh, guessing yourself, should we back out here? Should we take some more time? You know, was this the right thing to do, not get back out there and warm up? All negative thoughts. And you know, guys, we were talking earlier about uh, for a player like Allenby, the, the difference in where he finishes if he makes bogey here is not as financially significant to a tour rookie because Allenby has made a lot of money in his career but seventy thousand dollars difference if he makes this putt or misses this putt could become very important as you look down the line for as we mentioned earlier money title making the tour championship finishing the top ten on the money list all those things that as we uh, mentioned sometime earlier this afternoon that's what you go back and measure guys on right not their career money because Charles Howell has earned as much money in his career as Jack Nicklaus and because of that, you have to really stay in the game more so than you ever did. You know, when, we, when I first came out here, you, you're in the year sometime in October, and it was ended. There was nothing else going on. Right. But. Robert running a little hot here as he's giving away some, uh, some money and position on the leaderboard. This uh, bogey, at least here at the last. So now Woods will putt 
a little surprised he's yeah, putting too. earlier. Uh, just to champion normally would put out last. But he would probably be, Kresge would be standing right in his line. And all these people have waited at this point. <laughs> I'm sure they'll wait another couple of putts. Would have been for 22 under and alone with the uh, Western Open 72 hole scoring record. Instead, he will share it with Scott Hoke at 21 under par. What, not bring a coin, Tiger? We're going to mark okay. We're going to have him tap in. So, by five, Tiger Woods will win the 2003 Western Open and puts the slump talk to rest. He's won four of his 10 starts in 2003 and strengthens his position as favorite for the British Open in two weeks.